Hey folks, Paul here. Um, we're now in late winter and at the very beginning of the winter to summer transition, uh, a period of often drastic instability in terms of weather and water conditions. Uh, this is more the case the further north you go and it's quite a bit mellower the, the further south you go. If you're a cold-blooded creature uh, or someone who chases cold-blooded creatures, you can't help but be affected. At this time, water bodies remain generally winter cold, um, and here in the north many are, are still locked in ice. Um, but it's at this time of year, though, that the sun begins its return, its march across the latitudes. And what's really different now is that it's coming on with a vengeance. What's happening is that both the sun's angle and duration, that's the day length, are increasing at an accelerating rate. The further north you go, the faster it's coming on. Um, but uh, regardless of where you are, uh, winter's days are essentially numbered. We're in February now, and where I'm at, the sun is now able to heat the water. What's actually causing that heating is what's called incidence. Uh, that's the angle that the sun's rays strike the land, the water, or any object. The more direct, the more effective those rays are at heating. Incidence, in fact, is the reason we have seasons. And it's those steeper angled sun rays with the help of wind that causes ice out. So knowing this, as winter transitions into spring, I start chasing heat. Unfortunately, in late winter, seeing that glorious sunshine um, on these early thaws that we get and the sun angle returning, I get excited about chasing heat. The problem with this is that like an inexperienced hunting dog, I may jump the gun, get ahead of things, and start snooping around where the bass aren't. Um, or at least aren't yet, anyway. The signs, um, high sun, uh, receding shadows, uh, rapidly melting snow, uh, male birds beginning to sing, uh, birds are strongly photoperiodic, and ice out, all work together to get my anticipation up. Uh, but. In late winter, the land, and especially the water, has to play catch-up uh, to the sun's advance. The seesaw battle between winter and summer uh, has only really just begun. And a battle it is. Uh, here we can have, uh, where I live, 60 degree Fahrenheit weather, quickly followed by arctic blasts that plummet us back into single digits. And those cold spells put a cork in those singing birds. They are no fools. How do the bass and we adventurous anglers cope? In this video fishing journal, we're going to hit a 10-acre gravel pit shortly after ice out, uh, during a nice warming spell, uh, what I call a heating event. Uh, we got an early one, uh, so uh, by mid-February here, we actually had a, a full thaw. So where are the bass during this glorious spring-like day? Um, dutifully and hopefully, I start by checking on heating. Now, since it's the sun's rays that do most of the heating work, it's the incident banks, those receiving the most direct rays, that heat first. And with late winter sun still in the southern sky, uh, it's the south-facing slopes that are in position to absorb uh, the most heat. The ice on the north shorelines actually tends to be the thinnest, and the water beneath tends to receive the most light. So the food chain tends to burst into activity first along north shorelines beginning despite the fact that many waters are still covered in ice. It's happening under the ice, beginning. And north, south-facing shorelines are the ones that thaw first. So north shorelines are often the best places to look for early spring activity, uh, provided other habitat elements are there that, that can, support, can support bass. Uh, also, Wind, even breezes, is the enemy of heating at this time of year, uh, serving to overwhelm any surface heating by rolling up that mass of cold water that's beneath. So calm, wind-protected shores, uh, coves and channels are places to keep tabs on. Uh, these are the places that will heat. They may not pan out yet, but they will. On this particular outing, as eager as I am to start catching shallow, aggressive bass, it's Still mid-February -feb here. <laughs> so um, I decided to cheat, uh, to try to cut some seasonal corners, so to speak, by choosing a super shallow pond that simply heats quicker than all the other waters in my area. 
uh, it also happens to be a palm that uh, has a lot of small bass in it. Um, it appears to be beginning to stunt. Um, but that's not the important thing. Would the bass actually get a jump on the season in that pond, uh, despite what the calendar reads? So, I'll spare you the suspense. Uh, no, they didn't. Not exactly, anyway. Um, again, the problem with shallow water this time of year is that um, it, it not only heats quickly, it also chills quickly. The bass apparently aren't fooled. Um, and I've played the fool enough times that uh, I have a, a late winter protocol for finding the bass. Um, it's pretty simple, provided you know that body of water and, um, or, or what to look for. So my tact this early is to check for heated areas that might hold some early bass. Um, then, more often than not, I end up heading right back to the wintering locations um, or, or to the very edges of them uh, where the bass should be getting restless and feeling the urge to move. On this outing, though, despite still being in winter quarters, uh, the bass were enlivened by that glorious weather, um, however transient it, it proves to be. Um, and on this outing, um, I did find the bass, and um, I even got a full-body jump out of, out of one of those bass. Um, can't beat that for February. Okay, um, so that's the pre-scoop. Uh, let's, let's go hit the water during a warming trend in late winter, just post-ice out. All right, I'm on the north shore of this shallow pond, mid-February, and we're over 50, 52, 52 degrees on the north shore. This is the incident bank, and the sun is right on us. All right, these fish will move. The temperatures are there, and they're going to uh, start needing to feed. They're going to feel that need. So this is a northern, uh, south-facing um, incident bank. It's getting these low winter sun rays uh, about as directly as you can get this time of year. And we have a breeze, south breeze, which is great. It's pushing whatever surface waters have warmed onto this bank. So that's why we've broken 50 here. I'm first checking these heated areas to see if bass have moved into them yet. If I don't find them, I work my way back into the wintering areas. see anybody here right now. Okay, I think my bass are further out. I'm not seeing them in here. There's one. <laughs> he ran up behind it and ka -thump. Didn't have to worry about detecting that. pretty fish. And I see a lot of pink in the belly, base of the fins, a lot of that turgid pink and that should mean red teeth and it does. See that? Yeah, that's a winter bass. It was fun. That, uh, that fish chased it. I could almost feel it coming. I think there was some water movement behind it or something. Uh, and then cut them. There's one. Oh. There and gone. Little guy. Right, let's see about straightening my bait out again. That's the hassle with these uh, low angle heads. They're weedless, slip through stuff, but they're not stable, especially with a flat bait like this.
there's one man i'm getting thwopped right there oh those are good good hits too <laughs> little guys i think they're not getting the hook that's for sure same spot too let's see if i can hit them this time and when i slow down there he is back on this okay there we go there's a little pocket of bass here there we go and they're little <laughs> Little guy, little guy. You are cold to the touch there, buddy. You are cold and your lips are not red. Your teeth are not red. Interestingly enough, it's two little guys without red teeth. Maybe a mature bass thing. There's one. <laughs> I had enough of a bow in the line that I just slowly felt weight come on. Oh, you bear, you look darn you. Another barrel bellied thing. There's one. Oh, that's a little better fish. Come on. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Trying to get that hook in. Oh, it jumps. You're going to jump, are you? Very nice. I don't know where my cavers were pointed at that point. My gosh. All right, Papa. Come on. Nice, very nice. That is a pretty fish. And there's the red teeth. They're all got they're all just chunks. There's one riding up on it. There's one and I hit him. And I hit him. <laughs> you know, when they're that far out, I can just feel them. I can just feel them, and then... <sighs> What's interesting here is that um, there's a, this is an old gravel quarry, and there is a channel that runs through it, um, and it actually runs for quite a little ways. Uh, this is uh, the major part of it, um, and it's likely that a good percentage of the bass are still here, um, this being their winter quarters, uh, and there's a lot of bass in this pond, so this is kind of a fish in the fish in a barrel situation. Okay, it's time I switched. With this wind up, I'm gonna stick with this heavier jig. Whoa, I got just plastered. Man, that was a hard hit. There's another one. All right. <laughs> Look at that. It took my tail off. 
stinker. <laughs> There's a lot of bass in here. And I've got a long cast and wind to deal with. Oh man. Alright, let's go with a let's go with a fat grub here. Paddle tail grub. Oh, this wind. Fast rod and braid. There we go. <laughs> you're fighting like a bullhead. It's your deal. Alright. 11 incher, and are you big enough to have red teeth? Just about the size to be mature. You could potentially spawn. You've got some red teeth in there. So I doubt you're a spawner, but it's possible at your size. There's one little guy. All right, I hit him. That's what I got. I got a lot of small fish. So I've got big ones and small ones here. And that's because that's the wintering quarters. All right, little guy with red teeth, interestingly enough. What's that about, dude? Boy, that water feels cold. There's one, and that was a good smack. Boy, they're thumping hard there, a few of them. Thank you. As I'd said, there's a lot of smaller bass in this pond. And yet we got some red teeth there. Go. Whoa! Oh, did you see that run? That was a speedy fish. <laughs> oh, that's deep too. I'm gonna get the hemostats to be safe. Come on, let go. <sighs> All right. There's one. Whoa. <laughs> Thunk. Okay, dude. Another little chunker. Barely red there. Yeah, 
There's one. Right in that Lee again. Another little dude, but at least you took solid. Boy, they are pretty things. They're just beautifully marked. Yeah, they are beautiful. Okay, quick recap here. I started by walking the shorelines. As things start to approach 50 degrees Fahrenheit and you start to get protected coves and things, uh, shallows, uh, places that get incident sun, the north banks, uh, all were heating. And today in these shallow ponds, um, the shallowest ponds in the shallowest areas, we broke 50 today. Yes. Uh, and I managed to find lots of bluegills starting to move in. Uh, they're not quite sunning yet, but they're crowding into those heated um, areas that are incident to the sun. Uh, north shores, protected shorelines. Um, and the bass were not shallow, and this is really the usual thing. I'll walk these high banks and things and just observe and the bluegills come first they come into those warmed shallows um, and the bass seem to still be in winter mode they're just um, away from shore dishpan ponds I have a hard time finding where those uh, um, those wintering zones are but I hit a pond today that was contoured enough uh, that um, it has a channel that runs through the middle of it <laughs> and that's the deepest water in the whole pond it's a very shallow pond and everybody ends up clustered up in that in that channel. So, 50 degrees. The that's when the temperature when bass start to uh, their performance level kicks in, and they begin to grow, and they start to get the urge to uh, uh, hunger starts kicking in. So the fish were happy. Um, uh, retrieve speed didn't matter too much. Uh, uh, I tried to stay slow. I was doing really well with a 16 ounce head. I had a 3 16th that uh, when the wind kicked up, uh, I was able to uh, still pick fish up and, and they were thumping pretty hard. Whoa, I got just plastered. Uh, missing a lot of fish too. Oh. Uh, a lot of those were small fish. Um, there was quite a mix in there. Anyway, good day. Uh, the bass were still in winter quarters, but uh, happy, as, happy as can be to uh, thump those uh, paddle tail jigs. So. All right, till next time, uh, uh, we'll see you.